Clement Greenberg, the art critic, had serious worries about the future of art. It had changed so much in so little time, and in the 1930s was still changing. Who could keep up? What did art even mean anymore? Greenberg needed to figure all this stuff out because that was his job. Let's start by talking about modernism. Modernism can be defined a few different ways, but Greenberg would probably explain it like this. In the olden days, people made paintings of other things. Jesus, or a fancy lady, or a bowl of fruit. The paint itself, and the canvas, and the action of painting were secondary, just a means to an end. Painters painted things because people cared about those things. Oh my god, that's God. That's a really fancy lady. I love fruit. But suddenly, right around the turn of the 20th century, painting became something else, and it changed for a reason. A few reasons, actually. Photography helped. If you could just take a picture of something, why did you have to paint it? So painting was having an identity crisis, but it was bigger than just that. We had industry, and secularism, and world wars, and uprisings, and artists were like, what are we doing? What is art anyway? And well, some theorize that it was Cezanne who was the first to be like, you know what? I don't really care about fruit. What's this stuff in my hand? I'm painting on this canvas that's flat, and I'm making illusions, and oh my god. What if I keep painting fruit, but it's not about fruit anymore? So he did keep painting fruit, but he wasn't really thinking about fruit. He was thinking about colors and shapes. This, says Clement Greenberg, this is basically what modernism is. Painters using paint on canvases and not caring about the objects they're painting, if they're painting objects at all anymore, but instead caring about the texture and the color and application on the canvas and forget about illusion. Everyone knows this is two-dimensional. It's not three-dimensional. It's all about medium. And meaning, which used to be, this is Jesus, this is a fancy lady, this is a bowl of fruit, has changed as well. Paintings no longer have to mean something, in fact, shouldn't mean anything. Splash it on there. Have a total sensuous experience. Okay, maybe this is technically a painting of a lady, but it doesn't matter. It could be a painting of anything, and it would achieve pretty much the same effect. This kind of painting became known as abstract expressionism, and Greenberg's idol of abstract expressionism was Jackson Pollock. It was a real asshole, but he made great modernist paintings. So now that we add modernism, what do you call a painting of a horse that's just, you know, a regular painting of a horse? It's about the horse. It's not about paint. Well, if it was made in the 20th century, Greenberg would call it kitsch. It's regressive. We've moved on. If you're still making pretty pictures of horses, you are living in the past. So why was anyone still painting horses? Well, because that's what people like. And when I say people, Greenberg would say commoners, the working class, the proletariat. They like paintings of horses because you don't have to think about them. It's really easy. This is a horse and it looks great. Confront a commoner with a Picasso and he's going to be like, what? What is all this? Is there even a horse in there? That that horse looks terrible. It doesn't even look like a horse. Are those supposed to be people? What's going on? Modernism is a problem because it asks questions that are really hard to answer. So hard that, you know what, they're unanswerable. You, you just can't do it. You can try, you can theorize if you're educated enough, but it'll all just be opinion, really unscientific. Maybe that sounds bad, but Greenberg did not think it was bad. He thought it was awesome. Art that asks questions nobody can answer. Perfect. Because that's what we need to keep art alive. You have to understand that Greenberg, along with pretty much everyone else in the art world, was terrified to death that art was dying. What does it mean for art to die? for all the questions to get answered. If that waif can look at it and be like, oh yeah, I get it, we're doomed. There's no point in making anything anymore. Greenberg was also terrified of kitsch because it was a mind control tool for fascists. Yes, Hitler's like, everybody likes kitsch, right? Because it means you don't have to think, right? So we can use it for propaganda. And meanwhile, he was looking at the avant-garde painters and being like, oh my god, if people have to think hard to understand, maybe they'll think hard enough to realize that I am an asshole. Get out of Germany. There's some problems with Greenberg's theories on modernism. First of all, they basically ignore several major art movements besides abstract expressionism. Like, what about Dada? Dada wasn't really about painting at all. It was about putting a thing on top of another thing because war is everywhere and nothing makes any sense and we're just gonna go crazy and hang out in cafes standing on our heads. Or what about surrealism? Surrealist painting is totally illusionary. It's totally about objects. Those objects just happen to me giant noses and ants. This is totally fruit. It's just fruit that's hovering in front of a guy's face. What about that, huh, Greenberg? He kept strangely silent on that issue. Another problematic thing with Greenberg, his beloved abstract expressionists eventually became cool to the common folk, too. Abstract expressionism in Playboy, in hospitals, museum gift shop. Because we all get it now. It's about colors and shapes, and we think it's pretty, too. Greenberg's like, oh, no. If commoners like it, it is over. Well, art is dead now. And you are dead too, Greenberg, as of 1994. The end.